Hi everyone, Peter here from Movement and Performance. In this presentation, we're going to be covering the fundamental components of fat loss. And then we're going to see how we can use this information to optimize our body composition. So the first thing we need to cover is the importance of calories. This is the most important concept um, with regards to fat loss. So essentially calories are basically energy from food. Calories are just the unit that measures energy. And this energy from the food we get is the fuel that we use for both movement, so um, any sort of exercise or movement that we do, and also for function, so uh, the function, our bodily functions like digestion and breathing and that sort of thing. And basically, when we have a calorie intake, um, and then we minus the calorie expenditure, or the energy expenditure, we get weight loss. So if our calorie intake is greater than our calorie expenditure, then we actually have weight gain. But basically this is the fundamental equation that we need to understand, is that calorie intake minus calorie expenditure equals weight loss. But it equals weight loss, but does weight loss mean fat loss? So we're gonna explore that throughout the rest of this presentation. So essentially, basically um, the energy expenditure versus intake equation that we just talked about has subcomponents to it. So this here, this entire box is our energy expenditure or calorie, um, calorie expenditure. And this is our energy intake. So how many calories we're intaking from our food. So our um, energy expenditure is made up of a lot of different components. So our resting metabolic rate which is essentially how much energy we burn just to stay alive. The thermic effect of food, which is essentially some energy is used um, just for digestion and that sort of thing when we eat food. But this is quite a minimal, um, minimal amount. Then we have exercise, which is another big component. So we have two different forms of exercise. We have non-exercise physical activity thermogenesis. Um, which is also sometimes sometimes referred to as NEAT for short. And this is basically any sort of movements that we do, fidgeting, moving around, um, that's not actually considered physical activity. It's just um, basically um, other movements that are not um, planned physical activity. And then we have actual physical activity, which is essentially doing actual... Um, exercise, so running or lifting weights or um, any sort of physical activity we can think of. And then that, basically all those things combined, um, basically has to be uh, more than our energy intake. And that way we can lose weight. So how many calories should you eat? So what should our energy intake be? So the issue here is that our daily energy expenditure changes. So this equation here, all these different factors change all the time. So they change based on how much training you're doing currently, what type of training you're doing, um, your fatigue levels, your stress levels, your NEAT. So the, this here, the non-exercise uh, physical activity, thermogenesis, um, what your body weight is, how much muscle mass you have, and then we also have metabolic adaptation. So sometimes when we lose weight, um, we actually have basically this resting metabolic rate adapts to become more or less based on um, certain factors. And then there's much, many, many more factors that influence our daily energy expenditure and, it's, and it fluctuates quite substantially. So it's very difficult to actually predict exactly how many calories we need. There are equations and things like that, but because it changes all the time, it's not um, probably the most, the best and most practical method. So how do we measure fat loss? So we have a few different methods. So we have scale weight, so jumping on the scale and see how much you weigh, and that allows you to measure weight loss, but the scale doesn't actually tell you um, how much fat you have and how much muscle you have and how much your body is composed of. So it doesn't tell you your body composition, it just tells you total weight. So that is a, it's a good thing that it tells you the weight, but it has some limitations as well. Then we have tracking our calories and macronutrients. So there's certain apps and stuff that you can do that on and track them. 
So this allows um, like a, a good accu a great accuracy of exactly how many calories and macronutrients you're eating. However, it doesn't measure any outcomes. It doesn't actually, if you eat this many calories, it doesn't tell you that you've lost any fat. It doesn't give you any of those measures. Then we have a DEXA scan, which is what this image of is here. And DEXA scan is exact, is essentially um, some, a machine that scans you and it tells you your exact body composition to the, uh, to the gram. So how much muscle you have, how much bone you have, and then um, how much fat you have as well. However, this is quite impractical and somewhat expensive. So it's the most accurate, but it's also the least practical. So how do we plan our fat loss? How do we, how do we make a plan so that we know we're losing fat? Because we have all these measures, but how do we actually know that we're going to lose fat? So I've got a few steps here that should basically outline this process. So first we have an initial measurement. So basically we take our scale weight and we have a DEXA scan. So that way we have an initial starting body weight and then we can also get um, how much body fat percentage we have and how much muscle we have. From there, we need to set a realistic goal, weight to achieve. So for example, if we're, um, if we're 80 kilos, like in this example here that I'm gonna go through, then we might want to get to 72 kilos. And that's going to be based on how much fat we have when we look at our DEXA scan. So um, we don't really want to get, unless we're doing um, for a short term, we can't really sustain very low body fat levels. It's not really sustainable. So for males, we don't really want to go any less than 10% unless we're doing something short term, like some sort of show or... Um, some sort of event where we need to be we look to look extra good for that event, but Basically, we don't really want to go below 10% um, as a sustainable way as a sustainable weight and we don't really want to go less than 20% um, Body fat for a female and the DEXA scan will tell you exactly how what percentage you're at so We then need to set once we have our scan and we have set a real, realistic weight goal to achieve, um, then we want to um, we need to set weekly weight loss goals in order to start slowly going towards these um, these body fat goals or these weight goals. So basically, um, depending on how much fat you're initially at, then that can sort of dictate how much weight um, per week you want to lose. So for someone who's leaner. So 10 to 15 percent for males, or 20 to 25 percent for females. You could probably lose around 0.2 to 0.5 kilos per week is probably a good range. If you have a little bit more body fat, so 15 to 20 percent, or for males, and or 25 to 30 percent for females, probably a better um, a better weight loss goal. Weekly weight loss goal is 0.4 to 0.8 kilograms uh, per week. And then for someone who, for a male over 20% or a female over the 30%, you can basically have up to 0.8 kilos per week plus, or even more depending on how much body fat you have. And that's because the leaner you are, the harder it is to lose fat, the more resistance your body will have to uh, losing any fat. And then the other step is to um, employ diet breaks or refeeding periods when appropriate. So essentially that's having a week or so or two weeks potentially in a row where you you stop your weight loss you just maintain your weight or even put on a little bit of weight in order to give your body a little bit of a break from all that stress and so these are probably best to pre-plan every four to eight weeks um, so that you can sort of lose 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 and then um, have a little break and then so your body sort of has a little bit of a reset and then you can continue the weight loss with less resistance and then we need to all, always adjust the process when necessary in the program in order to see um, basically how we're doing, is it too much, is it not enough, etc. So I've got this example here. So this is week 1 to 10, week 11 to 20, and then week 21 to 30. So this is, for example, 30-week uh, weight loss plan. So our, let's say we start at 80 kilos. We have our DEXA scan, and we're somewhere sort of in this range here. As a male, let's say 15 to 20 percent. So we start losing 
um, at about 0.4 kilos per week. That's our weekly weight loss goal. And we have some um, breaks here, week five and week 10. So 80 going down by 0.4 per week until we get to week five, we put on 0.2 kilos a little bit. And then we start from there going down, down 0.4 grams, uh, 0.4 kilograms per week. Then we have another break at week 10. And at this point here, they've lost um, nearly four kilos. So maybe they've sort of gone down into this sort of range here, maybe below around 15% body fat. And now they're struggling to lose 0.4 per week. So now we're gonna drop down to 0.3 kilos per week. And we're gonna do the same thing, 0.3 kilos per week, have another little break at week 15 and week 20. This time we're not going up in weight at this break, we're just going to maintain. Um, and then the last 10 weeks are essentially the same thing, but again, they're getting to a much leaner state now. So maybe they're, you know, below 15%. So we're going to go 0.2 kilograms uh, per week. Nice and slow, nice and easy. Again, same pattern, uh, break at week 25 and 30. And eventually at week 30, that's sort of their goal weight around there, 70, 72-ish. And <clears throat> they've basically achieved that as long as they're um, sticking to these goals. Now, the issue is, in order to stick to these goals, we need to make sure we're adjusting our uh, calories. So I'm going to cover that in the next slide. So these are the sort of the practical guidelines in order to go through a process like that. So the first thing is we need to measure our scale weight, preferably every, every day, but if not, at least four times per week to ensure that we're meeting our weekly weight goals, plus or minus 0 0.5 kilos, because there's always going to be fluctuation. And it's best to measure your jump on the scale at the same time each day and preferably the first thing in the morning uh, before you have any food or drink. That's why it's going to be the most consistent. And then we can sort of track our calories and macronutrients maybe once or twice per week in order to gain a rough idea about how many calories we're eating and what our macronutrient intake is. And then from there, we can allow adjustments to our eating. So if we see that at a scale weight, we're not actually meeting our weekly weight goals, we're not losing as much weight as we need to, then we can start reducing how many calories that we're eating. So that way, if we track it sort of um, at least once or twice per week, we get a rough idea and then we know we need to start dropping a few, maybe some calories from there if we're not meeting our weight goals or if we're losing too much weight, maybe we can, we have to eat more. So that can basically give us a rough idea and then allow adjustments to our eating. And then the last thing in order to get a real precise measurement on your body composition to make sure that we're losing fat and we're not losing uh, muscle is that we can get a DEX scan every three to six months in order to actually measure our long-term process progress and make sure that um, we're really achieving what we are trying to do. That's it for this presentation, guys. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this. So you can follow Movement and Performance on Facebook and on Instagram with the details here. And then um, you can subscribe to this channel on YouTube for the latest informative videos. So on the Movement and Performance Facebook and Instagram pages, um, you will find these research infographics, which are essentially the latest uh, scientific research in sports performance training. And they're summarized into these into these uh, infographics, which make basically highlight the most important aspects of that and uh, make it easy to understand so that you don't actually have to go into the scientific journals yourself and read the entire paper. So if you think that's interesting and you're interested in watching these videos then you'll probably find these, um, these infographics quite informative and you probably will like them. So thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you got something out of this. Um, and make sure you check out the next video and stay up to date. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.